everyone, welcome back to Versus Live. My name is Corey Ballmeister. I'm Ross Marion. And we got Dan in the booth. Say what's up, Dan. What's up, Dan? All right, Dan will be taking your questions. Make sure to take at Star City Games. He'll get his fa- he'll get his favorites sent over to us. We will get them answered for you. But for today, we are playing a little bit of maybe the more tier two pioneer strategies. We're not playing all these decks that we've all been seeing constantly. You know, we're going to yeah. kind of save that for Thursday to give you the full effect of what we expect uh, to see at SCG Indianapolis this weekend. But for now, we're playing the decks that we think have a chance to make it there, but maybe aren't quite uh, the the top tier decks. Um, we had Possibility Store, Take Me Down, uh, Take Down Harden Scales, Round 1. And now we got, is it Wizards? And I know it is it, Wizards. It is, it is Wizards. Yes, 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 yes. We got uh, Blue Red Wizards here up against your Simic Ramp deck. Yeah, and honestly, like this Simic, you know, mid range Uro Ramp deck. Of the six decks we're playing today, this is my pick for of the best one, the one that is most okay. likely of these six to top eight, because Uro is just, it's a plan in and of itself against aggressive decks. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Just know, play it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that built in. I played against a similar deck to this list at the first team open, and I was playing Mono Red in that one, and I got obliterated. Mm. Like, my opponent had a, a, a curve of, like, Arboreal Grazer, into Uro, into Cavalier of Thorns, into yeah. Escape Uro. Oh, that was the youngsters, right? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. Game they beat us Monorail. pretty badly, too. <laughs> so, so, like, that is a strong curve. And that's a curve yeah. that's actually going to clock people, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, they're dead on turn, like, five. Yeah. Turn six at the latest. I, uh, something like that. I've been, uh, I've been messing around with Uro a little bit, too. Like, you know... It, spoiler alert, I'm going to be playing some Breach, you know, this weekend. I think you are kind of on the same uh, same thought process. But I I mean, my my for sure fun factor when I'm firing up a league to have some fun is with Sultai Delirium. I still think it's competitive as well because, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to fire up a league if I don't think it can win. I mean, winning is fun, right? But this the Sultai Delirium deck, I think, is a blast because Uro is just such a blast of a card to play. I mean, you know, you got to pan out Delirium and stuff like that. But I, I just think the card is so powerful, and it's creating uh, it's creating decks kind of out of nothing, right? Like, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, it, it gives you an advantage on every single axis, right? Yeah. It gives you that life buffer, so you don't have to worry about getting, you know, cheesed out of the game by aggro decks. It is a large creature on the battlefield, so you're gaining tempo because it's mm-hmm. undercosted, and it's drawing you cards every turn, so it's putting you ahead. And it can be played course. through removal. Like, Earl is just unreal, you know? Like, they just yeah. kill it, and you're like, it's coming back eventually. I've been drawing all these cards to facilitate my graveyard even more. How do you beat it, you know? Yeah, so, so. and and we've been, I've mentioned not trying to ignore a little bit of the combo aspect of the Demir deck, this deck yeah. does that. Like, we're not really yeah. disrupting these combo uh, turns. I don't think the breach matchup for this Simic deck is going to be good. That's why you see a bunch of damping spheres in the sideboard. Yep. But the other matchups, it just powers right through what they're doing. And unless the Demir deck has that early combo, I think you're going to be ahead. Yeah. Y- you can also just race to Emrakul. There's a one copy of Emrakul, the Promised End. Yep. You just cast that. Inverter decks usually die. Like, you usually find some way to kill them. Same with the Breach. Yeah. And you, know, you can cast that card as early as turn, like, four, maybe, because mm. you have N- with Nissa. Something like that. And does it play if new rivulets? Mm. Yeah, as four yeah. of those, which is yeah. like, you know, they can't go for that quick combo if you have rivulet. Yeah. They literally can't. I mean, they can risk it, but they cannot go d- inverter into kill on turn five. You just can't do it. You can go on six inverter into Oracle if you're, you know, if you dig through time on turn five or whatever. But, you know, that deck does do a decent amount of ramping. But I did play that deck uh, just like just trying it out a little bit or something close to it. And, uh, you know, I just played against Breach and I'm just like, wow, my cards do nothing. Yeah. You know, you're, you you're, just hope for those sideboard cards and still, like, uh, yeah. Your breach yeah. matchup is not going to be good, but I like this deck against basically everything else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's not a bad place to be. I think breach is going to be underrepresented this weekend. For sure. People are for scared sure. of it. They're scared of the hate. They don't yeah. want to learn it because they think it's going to get banned. They love yeah. inverter. There's a p- ton of reasons to rationalize yeah. not playing breach, even though the deck is messed up. Yeah, the deck is messed up. But I, you know, honestly, I'm not, most of the time, I'll be very honest. If, if I think a deck is insane and you should be playing it, you know, I'd be pretty vocal about it. This one, I don't, I don't know so much. It depends on the hate. It's a hard deck to play you yeah. know i don't and, think breach is and insane. inverter is also a really strong option so i'm, exactly. I'm not gonna you know exactly. say everybody playing inverter is making a, a mistake so yeah but i do think of the top decks you know it 
Breach is going to be the one that is least representative relative to its power level. And so yeah. if that's where you're going to place your bad matchup, I think that's a reasonable thing to do. So what you're saying is cut all your damping spheres, right? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. They're, they're not going to be good this weekend. Leave them yes, at home. Come all. Yeah, yeah. Burn them. Rip them. Play on Mordigo instead. Get those inverter players out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'll be interested before we start this. Um, if you know my aggressive strategy is able to keep up against uh, Uro in general, you know. Yeah, and then, you know you have a bunch of flyers to fly over it, which is nice. But you don't really have a way to contain Uro. No, you know, Mono Black deck can kill it and then try to kill you before you get to escape uh, escape it again. The uh, red decks are sometimes now incorporating like different. Act of Treason effects to try to kill you yep. in one swing. Yep. And Eldrazi like, Obligator is kind of yes. my favorite. Yep. Uh, and Spirits has Nebel Gas Herald to lock it down. Yep. So all the aggro decks that are seeing a lot of play have ways to contain they have it. have to. The yep. red decks really don't. Yep. So that, that it could be a problem. Okay, I think I have to mulligan this one. Uh, you know, great hand, curious obsession in your opener is what yeah, you, you want. Get, you get to be on the no play. No creatures. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you're on the play so often for match <laughs> I'm, yeah, one. I'm just... <laughs> I, I literally thought I was on the play. I'm so used to it. I'm guessing you'll keep your hand? Yeah, my hand is actually good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Corey's on the play. He's mulliganing to six. What it's kind of world is this? Day. Yeah, is it? Is, are we in the Twilight Zone where I'm getting <laughs> Ross's luck? I don't like this. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> yeah. So while you're shuffling, Corey, um, Okara115 asks, uh, do they think, is there, do you guys think there is a card that could be similar to, uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Bloodbraid Elf, Stoneforge Mystic, in that it can be unbanned in modern and still not be too powerful, but fun enough to create new archetypes. So this is for modern specifically? For, this is for modern. Oh, okay. Um, I don't even know what's in the ban list, so I'm going to let you take this one, to be honest. The, so The card that I've advocated for for a while that I think can, can come off is Umizao's Chite with Stoneforge Mystic. We might be pushing it. Yeah. Um, but I don't actually think GTA is nearly as powerful as it used to be. You know, part of the reason that, that card was great is because of creatures were smaller in yeah. general. So the minus one minus one was a lot more impactful. Like you were killing dark confidants and, and stuff with it. Yeah. Now you're really only killing mana creatures. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm not sure how. But how, does the, like, what's the upside of unbounding that? Like, you know, you know it, like a lot of people get to play with Jute. Yeah. Like, also, like, what decks are playing it? Other than maybe, like, Stoneforge Mystic decks will, will play one. Yeah. But yeah. Like, the, aggro, the default aggro deck is, like, humans and prowess. They're not playing Jutes. That's true. That's true. Would yeah, Ponder or Preordain cool. be good cards to take no. off this list? Okay. Stop. No. We did not take those off. Yeah, those cards are too good. S Serum Visions and Opt are already staples of the format. Like, yeah. I don't understand why you want more cantrips. Yeah. We yeah. Last year, the best deck in the format was a deck to play 12 one-mana blue cantrips. Yeah, Astrolabe is already like the best yeah, blue and, cantrips. And now we, and now so, we have yeah. Astrolabe. Like, we, we do not need more of them. 20 cantrips, you. though, Ross. I promise you we do not need more of them. All right, I'm going to keep mine. You good? Yeah. All right. Um, right. We're just going to play Mountain and pass to you. Okay, I will play Botanical Sanctum and put Land Wells in my graveyard. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that is why we played Mountain. So. <laughs> All right, now we're going to take two, and you're taking one. 19 to 18. Your turn. It's okay, though. I got another one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's perfect. All right, we'll see what we can do here. Oh, that's an interesting one. Disagree, um, but that's okay. Okay. It's not interesting at all. So you can't Nissa me next turn. I'm going to take two again, so I'm going to go to 16. Um, Swift Spear you and give you the beatdowns. Take it. All right, take two. And then we'll play an Arcanist. Pass to you. That's pretty good. Not bad. So I'm at 16, or you're at 16, I'm at 17. Yep. You're winning. Okay, so I curve better if I just tap out this turn, and my elf is going to die anyway. So let's play a QB and attack for four. All right, I will take it. You're at 12. 12. Pass the turn. Okay, that's a scary card. Yeah, but this is the turn where Corey goes off. I guess you don't have that many cards. There's spells and you can't. That was a good one. All right, we're going to attack. I'm going to shock yep. this. Yeah, burn spell. And I will wild slash that. So the shock's exiled. Oh, okay, yep. So you're going to take, take seven. Take seven, yep. I'm at 10. All right, and then I will light up Tapped. the stage. Great turn. Okay, we'll play this. Tapped. Tapped and passed you. 
All right, what do you got? These are gonna be some uh, quick games, I have a feeling. So, I'm at 10, mm -hmm. and you already have the capability of casting two spells with a shock at me. That leaves me at a, an effective one. Yep. Um, think that means I want to play... Ugh. Yeah, this will be interesting, this matchup. I could either see it be, you know, a very close matchup or dominating on either side, you know? Like, it, only, only time will tell on this one. Okay. Um, let's play Jade Light Ranger. Okay. Um, it's probably not the best. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think Cyclonic Rift is going to do it. Okay. It would have been pretty reasonable if I had one more turn. Sure. I think we need to find something better, though. Okay, huh? That's unfortunate. Uh, but all we're trying to do is block, so not a huge deal. Block, 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 block. Uh, and I'll play Seder Wayfinder. Okay. Are we Uro? getting that Uro? We Seems like you were supposed to hit Uro there. Uh, I will take you got a creature ball, land, yep. Seeing as it's another blocker. Yep. And pass the turn. All right, let's see what we can do. Hiya. All right, so we're going to start with this opt. Makes sense. I do not want a Spire Bluff Canal. Draw, all right. Um, so let's see, you're at 10, huh? That's what they say. That's what they say, who says it? Nobody. Okay, um, well, I don't see how this is not the play. We're gonna go with Mage. Yep. Opt. Um, yeah, I guess we'll keep this. So two spells cast. I will attack, and then I'm going to wild slash that. So three spells cast. Yep, but and this only recognized two, so yeah. it's going to be three. So four, three, and a one after I block this. Seven, go to two. eight. Yep, you go to two. All right, pass to you. Yeah, it's probably going to be it. <sighs> yeah. Unless you can uh, ramp up to Ugin there or something. Yeah, which is in my deck. Yeah, uh, I we're, we're a little short of it. I, yep. I'd had the time to play Nissa last turn, but I just couldn't afford it. And I've yep. flooded a bit. Pretty aggressive creatures, that's for yeah. sure. Strong curve. And Ooh. Dread, Dreadhorde Arcanist is a card that often looks embarrassing, but is going to be really good in this matchup. Oh, I definitely. I just don't have ways to disrupt any, it. Any, any deck that can't kill it effectively, you were going to get Hazard at it next turn. Oh, wow. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> oh I miss Hazard. Said no one ever, but <laughs> I like it. Okay, we'll right. continue uh, playing some pre-board games here, seeing as our sideboards are generally not geared towards yeah. weird matchups. Yeah, exactly. They're definitely these are the ones where you have where you have some cards for them, but they were planned for specifically yeah. other matchups. You know, <laughs> these are the matchups where you have to think. You're like, okay, so what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. What is in their deck? <laughs> this, yeah, this one's not in the old sideboard guide. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, you got a question at all, Dan? Yep. So, uh, Sonic Avs eight sixty seven asks, uh, "What do you guys think about blue white control?" I'm assuming it's blue white control in Pioneer because if we brought up Standard, then we would have to bring up uh, PVDDR, and oh, yeah. Corey would just go on for the next twenty minutes about oh, how we yeah. love that blue white control deck. Yeah, I mean, I've said it once. I'll say it again. Blue white control, I always thought was just such a heinous archetype in basically every format. Blue white control in standard is uh, an exception because that deck is a work of art. PV proved it. Congrats to you, PV. One of yeah, our yeah. Congrats, own. PV. Yep. Um, but yeah, in Pioneer, I think the deck is just not good. It's just I, not good. Yeah. I was kind of surprised with it because it, it did pretty poorly during the first weekend and yeah. then pretty well in Phoenix. You know, put a player in the top eight. Yeah. Its win rate was like 54, 55 percent, which is yeah. solid. Um, but if you looked at, at the matchup matrix, it was one of those decks that was preying on aggro decks. Yeah. There's a lot of aggro in Phoenix. It did not do well because everybody came prepared for it. Yeah. And it, when you look at Azorius Control, it did quite poorly against the other top decks. It's not very good against Inverter. It's not very good against Breach. Can't be good against Sultai Delirium either. That just keeps coming and keeps coming. Yeah. You know, you ever cool them eventually and the game ends, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I, I think that one's a little bit closer, but again, like, I'm still not great. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I don't think it's good now as the metagame is narrowing and yeah. it's, uh, its best matchups are being pushed out. Yeah, and I'm going to rant here for a second because when it comes to blue-white control and uh, Pioneer, yeah, I, I'm trying to, you know, we've been hanging out too much. I'm, 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 getting, the, I'm getting the ranting in. But blue-white control 
is one of those decks that when you're winning and you win with blue white control, it takes you forever to win, but you're in such control for like seven, eight turns in a row that you're like, wow, this deck feels awesome. But then you don't really recognize it when you just lose and just get slapped up super <laughs> yeah. quickly. It's like I got like, lucky. Oh, yeah, yeah that was bad. If I would have drawn this, the game would have been completely different. It's like, yeah, well, if you win three games, but you lose five, you're winning games more for more time than you are losing games. So I think it gives people this false satisfaction that the deck is actually good when I think it's just absolutely horrible. Yeah. yeah. Would not recommend. It wouldn't recommend. <clears throat> wow, I wouldn't I recommend would. the start of this hand either. I would recommend my hand. It looks Ooh. great. Well, it kind of got better at the end, but... All right, we're going to keep this one for science. Okay, I have an Elvish Mystic. Okay. You're up. All right, I will take two. Pass to you. Ooh, an opt. No, no, uh... I wanted to let you use your mana before I shocked it. Yeah, well... Attack for one. <laughs> <laughs> shocked. You would be shocked. I would be. You're at 17. Yep. Uh, and then I will play a Seda Rayfinder. Okay. I will select Botanical Sight. Okay. I will opt. Um, we want this very medium creature. I don't think so. We're going to bottom that. All right. We're going to untap. Okay. Now we're going to go with a one. I'm at 19. Your turn. Botanical. Tomio Collector. Ooh, Tales. spicy. I will plus, I think this in this matchup, I just need to build towards Ugin while digging for Uro. Okay. So I'm going to name Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Okie dokie. There's that Sylvan Advocate we were advocating about. Uh, attack for one. Okay, I will take it. 16. Pass turn. All right, so 16 to 19, right? Yep. Okay, well... At this point, I do want to uh, shock that Elvish Mystic. The real question is, what do I want to attack? Do I want to try to finish you off or try to deal with Tamio? This is always a weird question with Tommy. Yeah. It has like its abilities don't seem that great. It has so much loyalty. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's usually not worth going for in my opinion. But I do want to get rid of La Elvish Mystic because I do not want Nissa to come down. That is an actual clock. So we're gonna shock that, and we're just gonna hit you for four. I'm at fifteen. Your turn. We're just gonna kind of try to cheese you out here a little bit. Okay, I will play a Seder Rayfinder. Okay. Keep digging for that Uro. You could just name Uro, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hit Uro. Okay. So I'll have that next turn. I'll take you off my coast. I don't love that. Is tapped. Um, and so now what am I naming with Tomio? Um, I think I'm still naming Ugin. That's still the end game. Okay. No, it's the Spirit Dragon. All right. So uh, far, Tamio is just, uh, you know, glimpse of the un unnatured you or what, unthinkable. Okay, 15. 15 all. Pass the turn. All right. Okay, we're going to start with a mentor. Am I just wrong about this deck? I swear I, like, looked at this list. Are there just no Ugins? <laughs> <laughs> might not be. I do, yeah, I do I'm, this, I'm looking in I do this here. quite often. Wow. Like, I just look at so many deck lists, and sometimes I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's the one I submitted, and then I just think I know the one you're one. thinking of uh, that I just yeah. recently did well. That's hilarious. Yeah, I just confused the deck yeah, list. Yeah, there is no Ugin in this Okay, list, well, dude. we named cards that aren't in our deck. <laughs> Impressive. So go me. Now if you win this game, too, you're really flexing on me on that. <laughs> I like that. So we're going to crash through. Yep. <laughs> um, that's awesome. <laughs> you, you impress me every day. All right. I, call, I call it Daily Digest Syndrome. Crash that, That's when I started just looking through deck lists ravenously when I was doing Daily Digest. And like, oh, sure, I'm sure. Like, I... All right, we're going to attack for nine. I'll let you. Okay. Uh, we just want to buy time. So I'm actually just going to bounce one of the Storm Chaser Mages. Okay. And take three. Take uh, five. They'll have trample. Oh, you have... Oh, you crash yep. trample. Okay, so mm -hmm. I just shouldn't block it. Take six. Yeah, I'll just take six. So I'm a nine. Okay. Um, put you to nine... Then what do we want to do here? I probably want to. I'm gonna take two. Thirteen. 
Yeah, eh, I mean, you are gonna play Uro next turn, and that is scary. Um, so maybe we just need to get more spells. All right, let's light up the stage. Those are spells. Those are definitely spells. You have three in hand? Three, yep, past you. The Storm Chaser Mage. Yep. And you're at nine, right? Yeah. Okay. So Uro is pretty good here. I am going to rebuy Cyclonic Rift. Okay. It's quite I'm strong. I'm going to go to eight and escape Uro. Eight to 11? Uh, yes. Okay. Then I'll go back up to 11, draw a card. Sure. Uh, put that on the battlefield, play Mutavolt as my land for turn. Okay. This is in my hand, and uh, I'm going to attack for just one. I'm at 12. Pass the turn. So in case you have another like Swift Spear or something, I can block. Um, and getting into 12 means two Uro attacks is also legal. Yep. That Holy crap, sense, we man. just got raided. Oh yeah? Who raided us? Croakies. Croakies! Oh, 1,300 people. <laughs> How many? 1,300. All right. What's okay. up, everybody? Croakies. The best standard player on the internet. <laughs> all right. Welcome all the raiders. What, what kind of fun decks were we up to today? Are we still breaking it with his favorite deck, Blue White Control? <laughs> Me and Kroger do not share the same love for Blue White Control. He is uh, he is not a fan, believe it or not. All right, so we're going to start I've with seen. this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start with this. Um, then we're going to go with Opt. Yep. Triggers. Bottom this. Drop. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, okay. Four in hand. I have four in hand. Yep, haven't played a land yet. I gotta play this if I want to use it. All right, we're gonna go like this um, and declare attacks at... We're gonna go at you. Um, no blocks. Oh, wild slash you. So that's the second spell they've seen? Yes, yep. So this is going to be an eight ball? Yes. It would be two as of now. Which will put me to three. Mm -hmm. And so Wizard's Lightning would kill me. Yep. Don't want to die to Wizard's Lightning. So I'm going to take one and, and bounce one of the Storm Chasers. Okay, so you go to ten. Ten. Um, and I'm currently and then, staring at three. And then take Shock. So you go to eight, eight and yeah. then three down to five. Yep. Okay, and then I will take a pain and go with Soul Scar Mage. So you're at 11? Yep, your turn. All right, well, maybe I had a mistake from not killing Tamio originally, because now just the rebuy effect is quite strong. But. Yep. Um, I'm going to rebuy Cyclonic Rift. Okay. I could do it now. Um, or I so inclined... <laughs> But you have a lot. You have th two in hand. I have three. Three. One of which is Storm Chaser. Yep. Overload returns everything. Non-land permanence. Just think? mine. Yeah. Okay. Your opponent's control. That uh, seems pretty good. Yeah. It conveniently costs seven. Yep. Um, so were I to do that, Corey could potentially, and then, and then, uh, say just attack with this, then you could go Storm Chaser. I think there's a Wizard's Lightning there, and maybe a, another spell. I'd be at eight. Storm Chaser, Storm Chaser, Wizard's Lightning is only seven. So that's convenient. Yep. Um, and I would leave two blockers back for the Swift Spear. This wouldn't be able to attack. And you'd be, if you can't kill me, you'd be forced to leave something back for this. Yeah, not looking great. Not looking great for me. You got, you got some nice options. Um, Uro, we're just witnessing the power. You know, I mean, just brings you back from death. So quickly. So I can overload before block, so I might as well draw my card and see that. If okay. that changes anything. I'll go to eight. Yep. Draw a card. We can that is a good one. Okay. Um I am not gonna do it now. I'm gonna play even more conservatively. Alright. I'm gonna card. have to block here. Um might as well block with this. Yep. Okay. And I will pass the turn. Alright. 
That's not a great draw. Um, all right, I think we're pretty much toast here. We're gonna start with a Storm Chaser Mage. Yep. Crash through. Uh, sure. Declare tax. Yep. I will go everything at you. Block the soul scar. Okay, damage. You have three in hand? I do, yep. Um, so this is currently four coming through, so that's going to put me to four. If you have two burn spells, you can kill me. Whereas if I just overload Rift now, I take no damage, and you're just... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to overload the Rift. Okay. All right, bounce these, and then I will just play this and say go. And then commander players everywhere cringe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no kidding. I bet that is pretty <laughs> wild in Commander. And you're at 11, right? Yes. So uh, I will play Anissa. I will untap okay. here. I will float a green, activate, make a blue, bounce this. All right, that's game. Tech. That is yeah, game. I, I drew another Cyclonic Rift off the Uro, and I was Did like, you? okay. How many do you play in that deck? Three, I think. Might that's, be four. That's wild. Yeah. That's wild. It's a good one to follow up Nissa with. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay, well, we finished our first two pre-boarded game. We are going to head to the sideboard. Uh, for those of you who are just raiding here from Crokey's uh, channel, first of all, thank you for joining us. This is Versus Live. We play uh, a night. We play three different matches uh, live, talk about our plays, ask questions from you, the audience. So tag at Star City Games if you want some questions. Hand it over to us. We are going to take a short two-minute break, get sideboarding here, present you with the sideboard boarding process and uh, see see some input from you. So uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Versus Live here. We are sideboarding with Is It Wizards up against Simic Ramp or Simic Midrange, whatever you, you want to look at it. You play a lot of big Simic cards. It's a, I would call it just a Simic Uro deck. It's yeah. definitely just trying to get Uro. Yeah, I guess without Ugin, it is definitely closer to the midrange plan yeah. than... Uh, <laughs> From my end, we're not doing anything too crazy here. I want to bring in Graf Digger's Cage to shut down Uro. Also triggers Prowess, so this is pretty decent. Um, otherwise, we just want to, especially when we're on the play, we want to be just doing our game plan of just really aggressive elements, maybe get a Curious Obsession and start gaining card advantage that way. Uh, we're going to take out some of our clunkier cards. Hazard actually, like in most scenarios, I think is awesome, but you have all these like Seder Wayfinders to block, and just Uro just <laughs> makes Hazard look tiny. Brazen Borrow is a little too expensive, and I don't really want to be bouncing any of your value cards, so we're going to take those out. What do you got for uh, us? On my side, I like Shifting Ceratops uh, because I think that there might be some counter spells out of your sideboard. We see there aren't, but if I were sideboarding blind, uh, that would be a consideration, but it also just blocks Storm Chaser Mage, yeah. which is one of the yeah. cards that was applying a lot of pressure on me in those uh, pre-board games, yeah. um, and can also turn the corners, because I'm going to definitely need to end the game myself. So I like that here. I like Scavenging Ooze as a two-drop over Sylvan Advocate. It dies to Shock on turn two, but later yep. in the game, it's just much better. It's going to shut down Dreadhorde Arcanist, mm. which is awesome, gain a little bit of life. Yeah. Uh, so I think the upside here is a lot better. I'm cutting Tomio, because when you don't know what cards are in your deck, <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> just uh, naming Ugins, <laughs> love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it, it, in reality, I just don't think in a, lot, in a lot of games I'm going to have time to play a four-mana card that doesn't yeah. affect the battlefield. Especially on the draw. Like, that yeah. seems like a horrible card to no, have in. It, so. it helps dig for Uro, can rebuy Cyclonic Rift. We saw it do yeah. some good things there, but I th think it's going to be a liability in a lot of games. And if I just played a Shifting Ceratops instead of a Tomio on that turn mm. three, your Storm Chairs or Mage would have just never attacked. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, you have to pay one to give it. Uh, reach, but sure. yeah, agreed, agreed. They would have gotten one attack in. Yep. I, I am not bringing in Mystical Dispute because there just isn't a high enough density of blue cards in that deck. Yeah, and I could just go like Arcanist on two when you're holding up Dispute for my turn two play, and then that that seems pretty bad. Yeah. So. If it were a more blue heavy deck, then sure, but it's really a, a red deck that's splashing blue. Yep. Okay, so we're one and one with this. Uh, we're going to play our third game, but first let's take some questions from our director, Dan. Absolutely. So uh -huh. um, someone actually brought this up in chat earlier, and I forgot who actually said it. My apologies. Okay. Uh, Corey, why aren't you running uh, Adelie's the Cinderwind? That's the uh, legendary wizard that pumps all wizards when you cast a instant or sorcery, I believe. Um, 
it's it's three mana, right? Adelaide's is blue red. Blue red one. You know, I, I do think that is definitely on theme, you know, and that's great. But I think you just really want to use turns one and two to get your prowess creatures down and yeah. then just follow them up with spells until the end. I just think it's a little expensive, but maybe it's better than Brazen Bar or Hazaret. Like, I, I think that's a reasonable thing. You don't want four of that card, though, because that just makes your deck a little clunky. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I agree. It would take those slots if it yeah. made the deck. Yeah, I but think that could it, be reasonable. There, yeah. Because it's just a 2-2, two -two, there's real consideration in a metagame where there's a lot of Wild Slashes. Yeah. Currently, Wild Slashes on the downswing. Yeah. There's a lot more Fatal Pushes. That makes Adelie's a lot better. That's true. That's uh, true. So I think in the current metagame, that card makes a good amount of sense. I also love that card. Yeah. I keep trying to make it work in weird oh, decks. Oh, God. In, in that limited format, Adelie was just insane. Uh, Blue Red Wizards is my favorite deck by yeah, far. To I love in Dominaria. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, I think you can't do that, too many of that. You know, like you said, for shock. Plus, I think just the format is fast enough with all these combo decks that you play that on turn three, you might just die. You know, after that. So it, I don't know. It's I don't love the it. Kind of card that like you know everybody's going to be trying to kill your one and two drops, right? Yeah. And Adelie's is good when those cards live. So it is a bit of a win more kind of card. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, okay. Um, I think this hand is reasonable. We're a little light on lands, but nothing uh, too bad here. I'll hope to draw some something to get out of this. You good? I think my hand is great. Okay. So we're going to start with this. Uh, take a pain. And you take a pain. 19 all. All right. Your turn. Oh, okay. Don't have to take pain now. Drew a forest. Okay. Off. Sure. Sure. Yes. That's big, actually, in this matchup. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a pain, get that out of there. Have you take two. And I'm then Silver Falls was quite awkward here, yeah. uh, but pass to you. I'm at 17, you're at 18? No. Yep. 17 to 18. Is that not even a necessary card in that deck? If Shivan Reef, Spirebuff Canal, and Steam Vents? Yeah, I'm guessing this is a small amount of Silver Falls, yeah. but yeah. You know, losing the Elf is a pretty big deal, even though we, yeah. we kind of have to expect it, but there's a hand we have to keep. Of course. Uh, breeding Pool. You're up. All right, we're gonna untap. Now this is interesting. Um, I think we go with, since I do not have another land, I wanna go with uh, Swift Sphere, yep. attack, I'm take two. 15. And then we're gonna use this. You're um, at 17? Yep, yeah. 17 to 15, explore for two, one, two, your perfect. Lands. Um, Sequence them correctly. Man. <laughs> oh, man, I'm really playing some next level magic here. And the ever popular second main phase, Swift Spear. Your turn. This is going to get painful. Oh, yeah. Um, we do need uh, to draw non land now. It's so crazy how fast you go from wanting lands to not needing any more lands. I will cast an arrow. Okay. You go to 18. Yeah, and put a breeding pole on the battlefield. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Hopefully, this isn't too painful of a turn. It's gonna be a little painful, but if we top decked, it was gonna be a little bit nicer. So we got a mage, graph digger's cage, and we'll get in there for eight. I'm at 10. All right, your turn. Another spell there would have been excellent, but now at least we shut down the graveyard a little bit. Kay. That would have been just as good as a hazard, I guess, here, huh? I don't think you have another uh, one mana spell. Pretty good assumption. So I'm going to play Shifting Ceratops. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. We're going to untap. Definitely a dicey. Big draw step. Oh, that wasn't great. All right. You're at 10, huh? What are you at, Corey? I am at 17. 17. That's what I thought. Well, I have a choice. I could just attack with everything. Trade three damage for a creature. Um, I don't love that. Um, yeah, let's just go like this and play a land. Go. Now we're really just looking for this turn when we can, like, string a couple ops together or something. The light up the stage is supposed to be a little better. Okay, let's play Sadie Wayfinder. Okay. All my good cards. Yep, of course. Let's take a forest. Okay. Um, Why don't you bring back that Earl? Looks like a good play right now. Play a Botanical Sanctum. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. Spell. Not on time. Not on time. Um, yeah, that's not good enough. Dang it. 
Would have been really good earlier. Um, let's see. Would have been really good earlier. God, this is tough. I kind of just want to pass. You have a lot of cards, so I am afraid of... Uh... All right, we're just going to say go. Oh, very happy about that. Yep. And any, any extra turn I can get is a godsend. Yeah. I will play a mutable and pass. Okay. Dang it. <laughs> well, now our attacks are even worse, so I'll pass to you. On your end step, I will overload Cyclonic Rift. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Well, this turned around really quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's play a forest and okay. make sure I tap correctly here. Um, play a Tomio. You left one in? Yeah, there's four in the deck. I oh, okay. only got to pour three out. Okay. I okay. will plus and name Cyclonic Rift. Sure. You sure you want to name that? That card's actually in your deck. Yeah. <laughs> Let's escape an Uro. Okay. So you're going to go to uh, 13. I'm at 13. I'll draw a card. Okay. Um, and do I want to let you get in an attack with Storm Chaser Major? Clearly light on spell, so I think that's fine. We'll just put this in tapped. Okay. And attack for five. All right. I'm down to 12. Pass the turn. All right. This isn't great. I do have exactly 12 power on the battlefield <laughs> and Tomio to rebuy Cyclonic Rift. <laughs> that is pretty good. All right. Is there any way we can kill you? <laughs> okay. If we played these, we could play these. It's three spells. Um, I'm at 13, I have two blockers. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not possible, but we're going to try. Um... Huh. Huh, huh, huh. All right, I don't think we'll be able to kill you this turn, and I don't think we can die. What do we got? So you have exactly 12, and I'm at 12? Yeah, I also have a mutable nine mana. Yeah, but you'll probably need it for the Cyclonic Rift, is no, what I've I was I've got thinking. exactly nine. Huh? I have exactly nine. Yeah, <laughs> okay, okay. Um. Don't worry, I did the math. Dang it. Everything. I guess we just have to go for it then. <laughs> Everything is proceeding exactly as I have foreseen. All right. We'll play these. Yep. We'll go with a crash through. Draw. Not a bad start. Not bad. Not bad. Now what you need is Titan Strength, Teamer Battle Rage. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to get there. Yeah, we're just dead. We're just dead. You can down tick Tamio and then Cyclonic Rift me and, and then attack. attack. 14. Oh, boy. Well, all right. We're going to make you do it. I will... Take one. Yeah, take one. You're at 11. 11, and we'll bring in the pain. Attacking me, or... I guess we can uh, attack Tamio to stop this. Yeah, all right. Let's attack Tamio. So I can't uh -huh. kill you. Yeah, so... I just don't want a burn spell to kill Tomio, though a Wizard's Lightning will regardless, right? Yep. I can block two Wizard's Lightning here, and that'll kill it. But that does force the Wizard's Lightning at the Tomio, make you have it. I don't need this for lethal anymore because of the ping that you did with the Reef. Yep. So I'll block two of them. Um, okay. Well, I do have it. So you go to 10. Yep. I guess you could have also killed the Uro. Actually, yeah, and you wouldn't even lose the Swift Sphere, right? Because of the Soul Scar. <laughs> Yeah, but is that better? Because then you go to the graveyard and then you can just bring it back again next turn. So I don't yeah. think that really does anything. I think I actually have to kill Tamio here, which Makes sucks. Sense. But so you go to ten, Tamio down. Yeah, I'll lose one down. of these and pass to you. Still probably just dead here. You are forced to chump block. Yep. Um. So. Don't think there's any reason to fire up the mutavault and let well. I'm going to have this land at least. Let's start with the Wayfinder. Okay. Okay, mill four, perfect. Easy. And 
attack with these trigger. Sure. I go to 16. Ooh, another muta vault. All right, I have to jump. You take five, go to five. Yep. Then I will play a Jade Light Ranger. Okay. Leave that there. Play a land for turn. Yeah, we definitely had a key turn where you uh, were very uh, close to dead. It felt, but felt like two I, turns where I passed. It was like, please, Brick. Yeah, and we did. And we did. All right, well, we're going to go with a mage. We're going to go with a crash through. Draw. Um, yeah, with... Tons of blockers. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah, we drew, life, yeah. I drew Curious Obsession right on the turn when you could block. If I just ever had that early, it was going to be so nice. Never really had those Curious Obsession draws. Yeah, and yeah. that's the card that stops you from petering out yep. as the game goes along. What do you think? Do you want to you want to go best of five? We got a little time, or we, we got could we could also go fifty on the clock. So yeah, we could just uh, send to the last match too. Um, I don't want to take chat. a question before we go? Yeah, let's yeah. take a question and then we'll see how chat feels. So voice your opinions if yeah, you want to see this chat. or our last match, which is going to actually be Boros Feather against Raja Suleban's Orzov midrange deck from yeah. PTA Phoenix. And those could uh, th those could go pretty fast as well. We did play a lot of aggro decks today. Uh, Pioneer is just fast. Yeah. Pioneer is really linear and really aggressive right now. So, all right, let's hear it. What do you so, got, Dan? Uh, from Okara115. Uh, I don't know if this is a stab at you, Corey. But it might be. Bring it. Are there any cards that aren't Felidar Guardian that they want to see unbanned in Pioneer right now? Okay. Is there anything? That, I don't know if there's anything that can really go back. I think everything can, can just stay in the Shadow Realm for right now. Yeah, I mean, there's cards I want back. Oh, the Nissa is one of my favorite cards. You know, that, I, I love that card. I love blinking that. I love, uh, I love a lot of things about that. But I don't necessarily think it should be unbanned. Yeah. That card was good. I have a similar feelings towards Smuggler's Copter. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Let's bring back Oko. That wasn't a bad one, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with that card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has been deleted. It has been mentally deleted from your brain, huh? It, it seems like it's been a long time. Get out of here. All We're right, all thinking uh, move to the last matchup, guys. Awesome. We'll move to the last match. Our director says it, so it's going to become reality. Well, you know what? I already have to give you the, the marbles. This week is just starting off so bad. I already lost, not even getting to a game three to you, fight for them. You, you always talk to me about how your weakness is in limited, right? Yeah. For Pro Tours. I think it's because you're, you're not good at playing bad decks. I think you're right. You're only good at playing really good decks. Yeah. I'm good at playing bad decks because I play them a lot. Yeah, you play them on purpose, which I always <laughs> yeah. think is very empowering for yeah. you. Yeah. You, go, you, you know what? When they say to widen your range, yeah. I interpret that as play bad decks and learn how to play them. Smart. Smart. So if you want to learn more sage advice from our uh, very own Ross Merriam, stay tuned for round three because we got a couple other uh, spicy ones coming at you. We're going to take a short five-minute break, and then we'll be right back for our final round of Versus Live. 